Welcome to the Inform Fitness Podcast, 20 minutes with New York Times bestselling author, Adam Zickerman. In this podcast, we're going to discuss my original vision for how we started Inform Fitness and where I want Inform Fitness to go and where we think exercise should go in the future. It's nice to see that my original intuition over 20 years ago has been validated by some recent science. So we're gonna bring on some scientists in this industry, some great testimonials from clients that have experienced this. I'm gonna be bringing in musicians and very interesting people, bodybuilders talking about how little they actually work out. It's going to shed some light on some very important topics. What's up, Inform Nation? Thanks again for joining us here on a very special edition of the Inform Fitness Podcast, 20 Minutes with Adam Zickerman and Friends. Now, why is it so special? Well, today we have added a very talented guest to Adam's group of friends to discuss high-intensity weight training, weight loss, and face melting. And we'll explain that in a minute. But first, if you are joining us for the very first time, let's roll around the room and introduce the team. I'm Tim Edwards from the Inbound Podcasting Network here in Los Angeles. And approximately 2,800 miles from our L.A. studio is Mike Rogers and the founder of Inform Fitness, Adam Zickerman, there in Manhattan. Now, back over here on the left coast is Sheila Melody. And Sheila, I'm going to go ahead and let you introduce our very special guest today. I am so excited to have this very special guest on our show today. Um, She is not only gorgeous and super talented, but she is just an amazing person. And uh, she has a really, really inspirational story to tell us. She's in an incredible band called No Small Children. She's also a music teacher Please welcome Joni Pimentel. Joni, hello, hello, hello. Thanks for joining us, Joni. What you're hearing at this very moment are my dogs going crazy. <laughs> I apologize. How many dogs do you have, Joni? Before we uh, dive into the content here, I have two small dogs mm-hmm. that hopefully my uh, my husband can wrangle them before they cause too many problems. Oh, we're, we're glad to have your dogs on the podcast right there along with us. Yeah, now, it's, great, that was a great a, introduction. Yeah, it's Indeed. a little like a nice pick in my ear, but... Joni, before we go into uh, the incredible success you've had with The Power of Ten, uh, please just give us a little rundown on what you do, uh, not only on stage, but off stage. I think it's a terrific story. Oh, thank you so much. And first of all, Sheila, thank you for that, your kind words and that awesome introduction. And uh, right back at you. So I, uh, as Sheila mentioned, I am a professional musician. My primary instrument is voice, but uh, I am also instrumentalist. And during the day, I am a music teacher. And in fact, the band that I play in, uh, all three of us are teachers at the same school. So we'll, we can get into that more a little later. Well, I find that interesting because you're all of you are teachers, yet the name of your band is No Small Children. Is this because you've had your fill throughout the day and you need to just kind of get away from the kids and get up on stage and rock out a little bit? You know, there, there's a number of ways to interpret that. The first being that myself and my two bandmates were all female and it first came about as a kind of protest to this expectation that uh, is made of women to somehow that we have to have kids and we have to do this and that a lot of our identity is wrapped up in being a parent and finding a way to celebrate the life of a woman outside of her role as a mother. So that's the first part of it. And then the other part is, in fact, you know, what we do during the day is all about kids, but a lot of our music is not for children. So. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I got to test to that. Well, okay, so in, in a little in preparation for today's show, I did go through and I, I'm so thankful to have discovered you and your music and your group, thanks to Sheila introducing you to the, to the team here. What, what fun music, first of all, it's very fun and it's terrific, but it's also quite funny. There were a couple of songs that I really, just the titles along, one of them was F you in any language. Am I correct yep. with that? <laughs> yeah, that's a song about world peace. Oh, well, so. Of course it is. <laughs> I got on the, uh, on the uh, chorus track, right? That's so right. Did, did everybody hear that? Did Sheila say that again for those that didn't quite uh, catch I was that? In the, I was in the F you chorus. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's our first little sample of some music from our guest, Joni Pimentel's group, No Small Children. If you listen closely, you can hear Sheila singing backing vocals. Joni, how did you and Sheila become acquainted? 
My sister Lisa and Sheila are friends for many years. And Lisa is actually in the band with me. She is the lead singer and the guitar player. And she introduced me to Sheila and and uh, that's how I became familiar with Informed Fitness. She said, just come to the open house, just come to the open house. And I said, okay, but Sheila, I have to tell you this. I hate working out. I mean, I hate it. I hate it with a burning passion. I really do. She said, trust me, trust me, just come and do the uh, open house. I said, all right, okay, I'll come. So I did, and I listened um, to the information about the workout, and she quite honestly talked me into it. She, I, she made a, uh, some really, really compelling um, points to me about the way that the, the workout um, is done, and I really loved that it looked super safe. Because as a, as a musician, it is very important to me that my arms are not hurt, that I can right. stand up on stage, that I can move heavy gear. And if I'm hurt, I can't do any of those things. And that was literally the first thing that she said to me is that this is very, very safe. So I said, all right. And then the other thing, and this is how she really hooked me, was that it only takes a very short amount of time. Mm-hmm. I said, all right. I'll give it a try. <laughs> so I came in and I uh, did my first session and she completely kicked my butt. And I remember a couple times saying to her, Sheila, I hate you. I love you. I hate you. I love you. <laughs> and, and, um, and then other times saying, Sheila, why do you hate me? <laughs> why do you hate me do this? But um, truthfully, it worked very quickly. I, honestly, within probably about three weeks, I really noticed a difference. And at one point, I think I'm probably feeling, you can correct me if I'm wrong. It's probably about three months in. I honestly felt like I was physically stronger maybe than I have ever been in my life. Well, yeah, I remember you telling me because you also had the, the thyroid cancer. Yeah. And And so part of that is you get very weak when you're taking the medication. And when you lose your strength is when you realize, oh, my gosh, how important your strength is. By this, you started to realize, oh, my gosh, this is a great way that I can, you know, find my strength and really get stronger safely Mm -hmm. and without taking up too much of my valuable time. So, yes, I remember because you were you were doing gigs and Mm -hmm. having to lift gear and things like that. And you were like... I, it's so much easier for me now. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's true. And actually, uh, you brought me back to, to the original reason that brought me to this process. Um, at the time when I first came to you, Sheila, I was close to my largest size ever. And um, just to kind of give a little information, in the past year, I've lost 118 pounds. Holy smokes. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. And Oh, my yes. gosh. And, and it was kind of serendipity that Sheila introduced this system to me when she did. Because as she had mentioned, I had been treated for thyroid cancer. First of all, that really spooked me. I'm, I'm very grateful that I've been, you know, haven't had any issues with it since. Mm-hmm. Um, it is certainly one of the more treatable forms of cancer. But anytime you hear that word, uh, it is terrifying. Mm-hmm. And the treatment made me very, very weak. And being physically strong is something that has always been an important part of my identity, that uh, being able to lift heavy things and move heavy things and maybe even being stronger than the average woman, I guess, um, I will admit that. That's something that has, like I said, was a big part of my identity. And when I went through that treatment, I, it, w- it really shook me. It really disturbed me because I felt like uh, I wasn't myself. So it kind of set me on a trajectory because I want to live a really long time. And when something like that happens to you, it has a way of motivating you in a way that other things can't. So, right, and I think that this particular system, why it has worked for me is because it's easier to execute. It makes sense to me. It's short. It's intense. And I can be done with it. And for somebody like me, it means that I'm going to comply. My mantra for the past year has been the solution to obesity is really simple. It's just really hard to execute. And anything that I can incorporate into my life that makes it easier to execute, that's what I'm going to do. And literally, this is the 
one and only thing, any fitness system that I've ever tried in my life that A, I can stick with and B, I have results and C, it makes sense to me. Really enjoying getting to know Joni Pimentel on the podcast today, and we're going to learn more about her weight loss strategy that led her to shedding about 118 pounds. And coming up on the back half of the show, Joni will be talking about pillar number two in the power of 10, nutrition. You can't lose the weight you want to lose with exercise alone. And our friends at Thrive Market make it easy to establish new habits with wholesome foods at wholesale prices. Whatever your lifestyle, be it paleo, gluten-free, vegan, or maybe you just want to eat cleaner, you'll find what you're looking for at thrivemarket.com. You'll also find great prices on all your purchases. Compare them for yourself to your local grocery store. We've been using several Thrive Market products at our house for the last few months, and we love it. Give it a shot. Visit thrivemarket.com to register for free. Once you do, your 30-day free trial begins. If you love it, join the Thrive Market community. It's only $59.95, and oftentimes you'll make that investment back within your first visit from all the savings. Tell you what, I'll add an additional 15% off your first order if you email me directly at tim at inboundpodcasting.com. I'll respond with a promo code that will slice an additional 15% off your order. Thrive Market is on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. You're listening to No Small Children, featuring our guest, Joni Pimentel, here on the Inform Fitness Podcast. Joni, what are you ladies working on now? So we have just released our third album, um, and actually one of the tracks from the previous album we recorded a video for. It's called I Might Get Up Slow, But I Get Up. And uh, a segment of our video, we actually shot it at Inform Fitness. Um, You can see the logo right behind us. It was uh, an homage to an 80s throwback video, kind of, that segment. It was really fun, and, and uh, Sheila was happy enough. Uh, we were happy that Sheila agreed to let us do it there. And you'll see me pumping iron there. They were on the equipment, but they were also did their little dance, which was, you know, <laughs> it was awesome. You have to see the video, and we'll put a link to that on the dis- uh, podcast page. So let's, let's sample a little bit of that song. The song was called what again, Joni? I might get up slow, but I get up. This is this is us at Inform Fitness. There it right is. Here. <laughs> By the way, I made those legs. Right <laughs> that a trombone or a tuba or something? That is a trombone. Trombone. Cool. Nice. And the alarm clock. Getting her up, but getting her up slow, for sure. That's right. Very cool. No small children. Joni, that's fantastic. Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, and, and not only was the music terrific, but the video was great. And we're, like, like Sheila said, we're going to put the link to the uh, video in our show notes as well. But uh, I love the fact that you're there at an informed fitness location in Toluca Lake in your, what, your Jane Fonda clothes, it looks that's like. Right? Right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Our uh, matching Jane Fonda outfits. Joni, you look very different now from how you looked in the video. How long ago did you film that? That was filmed, I want to say, about two years ago. Two years ago. Mm -hmm. You look like a different person. It was probably about six months after that that I really, things started to kick into high gear. And What was it that made you, what was the the catalyst that made you say, all right, now I'm going to go ahead and make this change and change my lifestyle and adopt the power of 10 into your life? What was the one moment that made you decide... I'm going to make a turn. I wish I could say it was like an aha moment where, you know, the skies opened and I just figured it out. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But it was actually more gradual than that. I think sometimes when you're really, really big, when the bigger you are, the more impossible it seems to reach your goal. It's like an insurmountable task. And there was a time in my life where I felt like I was being asked to move a mountain with a spoon. And what I've realized is that it's more about chipping away at the mountain. The mountain will move, even if you only chip at it with a spoon, but it will move eventually. So 
I think it started with, A, I had to make the decision that I was going to do something. Like I said before, the, the having being treated for thyroid cancer, was that was the triggering event. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the first thing. And then it took me prob- a little while to figure out how I was going to go about doing it. And when I moved to Los Angeles from Boston, I'm originally from the Boston area. I couldn't tell, really. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you should hear me with a couple drinks. I mean, that's it. It's like I sound like, uh, you know, something you see in the movies. <laughs> but, but, uh, sure. like she's from Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> you should ask my mother and my father about that. They'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. There you um, go. There it is. Just, uh, that was. I'm going to go to Dunkin' Donuts and get a coffee. <laughs> Joni, when did you start? Um, when did you make the decision to uh, do make nutritional changes? Was it simultaneous uh, with starting Power of Ten? Was it shortly before? Was it after the cancer treatment? It was. That's a great question, and I will say that you know. I didn't get to be 278 pounds. <laughs> yes, that's how big it was. The 278 pounds because I exercised too little. I got to be that size because I ate way too much mm-hmm. and too much of the wrong thing. Um, so it, the workout actually came first, and then the eating was the thing that um, – it kind of came in stages. The changes came in stages. And once I got, I really buckled down and, and changed how I ate, that's when the weight loss really became rapid. You know, the weight loss is, for me has been probably 70% about the food and 30% about the exercise. I do, it's the only weight training that I do. And Don't ask her to take a yoga class. <laughs> oh, man. You know, Cheers to anyone who loves yoga, but man, do I hate it. <laughs> yeah. And it's not for, and everyone, I, and of course I'm in LA, so everybody wants to sing the praises of yoga. And like I said, I, I, everybody that I know that's crazy into it, they're in great shape, but it is just not for me at all. It's a classic <laughs> contrarian punk rock attitude. Frankly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Why, why, why do you hate it? You know, I think it's maybe the kind of, because everybody else in L.A. is doing it. No, you know, it's, and I tried it when I lived in the Boston area, too. It's, it's more about... You said to me... I don't when have we were, patience for it. Yeah, I when we were talking about it at first when you said you hate, I hate exercise. <laughs> and I hate yoga. And I hate this and I hate that. I don't like group classes. And don't ask me how I feel. <laughs> right. Exercise to me is something I just need to get it over with, you know? It's like, to me, what I've learned is that it, it's like going to the dentist, right? I don't really like going to the dentist, but I love having teeth. So <laughs> exercise is the same way. I don't particularly enjoy working out, but I love being strong. I love uh, not worrying about being hurt. I love that things don't ache when I wake up in the morning. Yeah, Joni, I like you very like to like, hey, you know, I don't like yoga. Everybody else could do yoga. It's like live and let live type of thing. And you know what I've learned is that there's so many different personality types that we train that, that are out there that have uh, the same goals or same even situations that Joni has, but uh, they just they don't have the same personality type. And there's a different approach to how that that goes. I mean, I guess one of the one of the things I would want to know. Um, you know, like I, I, your 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 uh, exercise um, story is is the classic one we hear with anybody who gets results. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, would I? Is there anything that, that you would give as advice to people who are like you, or maybe even not like you, personality wise, for motivation for the nutrition part? Because that seems to be always something that you know we we hit and miss with all the time. And oftentimes, I think it comes down to the you know when someone's ready to make a certain commitment. That's that it's usually it's never an easy thing to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think if anybody thinks that there's an expectation, that's an easy thing to lose. Five pounds, ten pounds, twenty pounds, a hundred pounds. It's it's a it's a challenge always. And I'm, my question is, do you have any advice uh, for people out there? Who, like, what's the starting point for some real motivation? Just don't do nothing. You know, start there. And I know for me that it is more dangerous for me to look at eating like every little bad decision I made, it's all is lost. You know, it's like, say, like, say I, you know, I decide I'm going to change how I eat. If I 
in the past when I had like one little thing that's not on my diet, I would just throw my hands up and say, oh, you know, forget it. All is lost. And then I'd just go off the rails and eat whatever I wanted. But that, in fact, is more dangerous to my long-term success than anything that I'm going to put in my mouth. That every moment is a new moment. That, you know, don't wait for the perfect time to start it. That the perfect moment is the next one, whatever it is. Um, And then I would also recommend maybe starting off small. You know, like I said, when, when I know for me, because I was, I was really big that losing that much weight just seemed like almost impossible, like an insurmountable task. So I have to set small achievable goals for myself. Let's say, okay, so my goal is not to lose 118 pounds. My first goal was to lose five pounds. And then after that, to lose another five and then another 10. And and I might say my first, another goal would be I want to be able to do a certain amount of um, weight that I'm going to lift. Or I want to be able to drink a certain amount of water every day or to stay. You'd set like short-term targets. Yes. Make it because... They, smaller achievable goals because those little things really do add up. And, um, and when you started, Joni, if you can, if you can go back to the beginning of this, what were some of the nutritional changes you actually made? Um, well, at first, well, uh, let me tell you where I am right now, mm-hmm. what I do right now, and then and I can break it down more incrementally. So as Please. of right now, I don't drink soda. Uh, I stay away from caffeine. I try to eat only whole foods, you know, no, no prepared or, you know, processed food. Um, my, my diet is primarily made up of vegetables and protein and fruits. Um, I don't, uh, I really don't eat uh, a lot of carbohydrates, but I, I won't say that I never do. I just don't eat uh, refined carbohydrates. I drink a minimum of 70 to 100 uh, fluid ounces of water every day. I don't eat artificial sugars. And what else? Yeah. Wow. That's that's, that's that, primarily where, where I'm at right now. It's like a lo- it's a pretty large leap though for somebody it's who ate anything leap. they wanted. So did you just start that way and just cut everything off cold turkey or was it kind of gradual? How did you start? Um I would I would did it increment incrementally. Um my largest vice has always been volume. Hmm. So I would start off saying, okay, I'm going to cut out soda. I'm going to cut out um, bread or I'm going to cut out pasta or I'm going to cut out what, any of those things. And I was never really a big junk food junkie, but I just ate a lot of everything. So most of what I eat right now, I mean, I don't weigh and measure every single thing that I eat. I did for a while, but now I can kind of eyeball it and know how much is a cup or things like that. But I started off with small things and then worked my way up. No, sounds like a perfect plan. Just get started. Start with the small things and work your way up. Well, we're not done with Joni. This was part one of our episode, Face Melting and Fat Loss. We talked a lot about the fat loss today, but nothing on the face melting. That's coming up in next week's episode. The name of the podcast is 20 Minutes with Adam Zickerman and Friends, and we have surpassed the 20-minute mark in the show which means if you began your 20-minute slow-motion, high-intensity workout at the beginning of the show, you'd be done by now, and you wouldn't need to do it again until next week. How about that? Sound too good to be true? Well, just listen to Joni's story and that of countless others who have come through the doors of all eight Inform Fitness locations. It just works. Visit informfitness.com for a location nearest you. If there isn't one close by, purchase Adam's book, Power of 10, the once-a-week slow-motion, high-intensity fitness revolution, just like Joni did. And follow the simple instructions. It worked for her, and it'll work for you. Click on the link in the show notes, and it'll send you right to Adam's book in Amazon. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast right here in iTunes so that you don't miss a single episode. And we have a lot of exciting and educational topics on the horizon. It really will help ensure the success of this podcast. And if you do subscribe, we would greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for listening to the Inform Fitness Podcast. For Adam, Mike, Sheila, and Joni, I'm Tim Edwards with the Inbound Podcasting Network.